it's Andrew Shanks here for creativecow.net. In the next uh, tutorial in the series, we're going to deal with the spill suppression. The last time, we uh, dealt with pulling the key and moving our little critter, who was shot on DV, um, into position. And uh, at the moment, we've got a lot of green spill on him, so we want to take care of that. So today's tutorial is all about spill suppression. So the first thing, most obvious, is to of course give um, spill suppression a bit of a go. So let's just throw that in there and give it a test and see what happens. It will, it will default to blue, so we'll just change that to green. If we have a look at the before and after, you see it is getting rid of the green, but unfortunately it's giving it's replacing the green with a magenta cast, which is not exactly what we're going for here. So what I might do is try something else. Next thing I usually like to try is to use hue curves. So if we bring this in, and I'm just going to maximize this briefly. If we go down the list, we'll see that there is... G suppress, what that is is green suppress. So if we click that on, it brings up a nice big graph here. And I'm just going to drop our green down to zero. Now I'll just drop that back in so we can see what we're doing. If I ignore that, we can see that that's already cutting a lot of the green out and looking a lot more natural than the spill suppression was. So what I'm going to do. Right. What I might do is just bring down a couple of the other values in the sort of yellow region, and also up into the sort of sky blue region. Let's do this very roughly. Okay, so that's sort of sort of getting rid of the green. If we ignore that. And see it's done quite a nice job. Our only problem is it's desaturated things and um, we're actually getting a bit of shadowing happening because that's now turned to what was green um, has now turned to grey so um, that's the one down downside of doing what I'm doing here. But um, yeah that's good as a basis. Right and the other thing you probably want to do is um, it's looking a little bit blue so you'd want to colour correct that a little bit. Um, what I'm probably going to just do is I'll throw an expand in there because um, the levels on here are quite a bit lower than the levels on here in our background. So um, I'm just going to throw an expand in there. And if we go down here, if I hold down O and scrub on the swatch, you see it boosts the the whole region up quite a bit. It will start to clip on this unfortunately, so I don't really want to go too far with it. Let's do something like that. And there's still a lot of blue there, so what I might do is hold down B for blue. I'm just going to bump that back up a little bit. So it's gone a little bit yellow. And the background's quite there's a little, quite a bit of yellow in there. Now um, if I was going to colour grade this properly, <laughs> I'd go through a lot more steps than this, but I'm just getting it rough ballpark just for this tutorial. If you were doing colour correcting, you'd put it down through this chain here, and um, around where I've just put this expand as a sort of temporary uh, colour grade. Okay, here are a few additional techniques for spill suppression. Uh, first is uh, using colour X and uh, um, unfortunately this requires a little bit of mass, but um, if you just bowl down to where the green expression is and just fold that out. Um, and if you type this string in, um, G, basically what this means is, is green, is green greater than red? If it is, then um, what it'll do is it'll, it'll knock down the level of the good green to be equal with the red. So it goes through and it analyzes all the pixels and one at a time and it just compares the red value with the green value and if the green is overpowering the red then it knocks it down to the same level as what the red is 
Um, if it's not, then it just leaves it the same level it was. So, so that's one way. So if we have a look at that, you can see it's it's knocked it all back quite quite nicely. Um, over here we have the next version, which is another color X, and you can see it's slightly different. What this one's doing is it's limiting by blue, so it's asking the same question, except instead of comparing it with red, it's comparing it with blue and doing the same thing. Um, over here we have a slightly more complex one. And what this one's doing is it's comparing it to the average of um, of both the red and blue channels. So here you can see um, that it's yeah, basically it's adding the two together, dividing it by two to come up with the result, and then it's asking is green greater than that. If it is, then it knocks it down to the value of those two together. Okay, um, another Another uh, technique that you can use, but it's, yeah, I, I find it's it's pretty limited actually, is the color replace. Um, in here you can choose a color and then you can choose a destination color to um, get rid of. But it's quite, it's quite a narrow band, usually you'd probably use this in relation to uh, using some other technique. Um, it can help you just get rid of little speckles of color, but um, yeah, I tend to find if you're trying to do uh, a broad range, you just won't get it with this um, this technique. And um, yeah, another technique is to actually use a key light. And what you can do is in key light, instead of using it as the key, you'll do your key outside of this, pass it all the way through. But um, you'll use this on the um, on your color correct side, as you're going down through. And on here, you'll just make sure that this is turned on to on replace. And what it's doing is it's actually using the color correct within key light to uh, take out the uh, the color. But we're going to use we're going to switch mat this with um, the uh, chain that we did in our um, original key. So um, yeah, um, the other technique that comes to mind is basically doing exactly what these color X's are, but um, using discrete sort of nodes to uh, to build the same the same tree or get it to do the same thing. Um, the th one bad thing about Color X is that it does do pixel by pixel, so it is quite a slow process. Um, you won't notice it on if you've just got one layer that you're correcting, but if you've got uh, multiple layers um, and a big composite, um, yeah, it can start to slow things down. Uh, yeah, so that's about it for color correction. I'm Andrew Shanks for creativecow.net.